and welcome to New Junction. In this episode of Under Closer Inspection, I'm going to show you how I wire my modest size layout up to DCC for under £20 and without the use of a soldering iron. So here goes. So first things first, from a uh, controller, um, you'll have your bus wires, which is what you see in front of you now. Um, these are what's called, or what I call, medium bus wires, which are rated to 4.5 amps. Now, <clears throat> my layout does verge on what you could class as a larger layout, but because it's just three loops in essence, um, there won't be that many trains running, so I don't need the bigger bus wires. Um, the biggest indicator to if you need them or don't need them would be if you need to add a um, a booster to your controller, power booster, um, that's a sign that you need bigger bus wires. But these ones are rated to 4.5 amps, which is plenty. If you imagine you've got your controller, which then goes to these two bus wires, um, from the bus wires you will need um, to connect them to droppers from the track. Now the droppers I use are uh, these splice connectors, um, which I'll show you more of later. But of course you can get um, loads of these for a couple of pounds um, on eBay or wherever, um, and you get more than enough. And they literally um, splice into the bus wire while connecting to your droppers um, without the use of a soldering iron. Moving on from the uh, splices, the droppers in question. Now, this is where you will save a bit more money if you wanted to uh, do some soldering. But I actually use the Pico uh, pre-soldered rail joiners. As you can see, they've uh, already been soldered. Um, and they go on your track and literally drop down. They're uh, pre-threaded as well, de-threaded. Um, and of course they just go into the splices. Now these, the price for these can vary massively. They're normally about £6 for a pack of four, I believe. But sometimes you see them on offer. I was actually lucky enough to pick up a couple of packs uh, for £5. Um, so, without a doubt, this is the, the most expensive part of this little kit. Um, whereas you can literally do it yourself with a soldering iron. But, um, soldering wire to fish plates is an absolute pain. Um, especially if you're not uh, particularly confident. Um, so I would say it's well worth it just to avoid that job for the sake of having an easy life. The last uh, element to my little pack is this terminal block. Um, normally it's used, so if you had two baseboards, you, your bus wires would go in one end and out the other, and you'd be able to ooh, detach them like so and plug them back in. What I use them for is I separate them, um, and because they have a screw fitting, as you can see, just there, I screw them into the baseboard, um, just so it keeps my bus wires nice and neat. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll take you over to the layout and show you how I install it all. So here we are again on the layout. So here's my Hornby Select controller, um, and just to explain how DCC works a bit a bit better while we're in front of the track. It's very simple. The controller has two bus wires which go to um, the left and right side of your rails. So if you imagine New Junction is a giant loop, um, the outside edge rail will always be the black bus wire. The inside edge will always be the red bus wire. Um, that's just how I'm wiring it up. They'll leave the controller and go underneath the baseboard um, and then the droppers, which will be at certain locations on the layout, will literally be thread, threaded through holes and then using the splicing kits will then be crimped onto the relevant bus wires. As you can see the Pico kits come in two different colours, black and red. Um, what I'm going to do is Red's always for the red bus wire, black's always for the black bus wire. Keeps things nice and simple. 
Now, a very common question is how often do you have the droppers going through your baseboard? Now, officially, I suppose a metre and a metre and a half worth of track is perfect in a perfect world. What I've found in reality is with a simple layout, you don't actually need that many. I mean, uh, New Junction has been run on basically one connection point um, its entire life. Now I'm adding a station and I've got a uh, fill yard behind the scenes. Um, I think a few more droppers are nece uh, necessary. Um, I'm, no I'm noticing with more trains running, um, they're becoming ever so slightly unresponsive or there's a delay, which has prompted me to add more droppers. So where will I have the droppers? So on my layout, it's a giant loop. I've got them uh, on both sides at the scenic brakes and then bang in the middle on the edges. So I've got four points really. It's probably every two, two and a half meters. And literally, as you can see, very subtly, the droppers have been uh, put in with the sleepers and then there's two holes been drilled and they literally, you can see the red one there, if I uh, zoom you in properly, Ooh. and they literally, if we take you underneath the baseboard, you can see them there ready and waiting to go. So when I uh, thread the bus wire through, um, they'll connect nice and easily. And the way I'm doing it is the uh, black wire is always on the outside, red wire is on the inside keeps it simple. Now the bus wires themselves as they go underneath your layout aren't actually a loop of wire they're more a length of wire which will have its ends so it goes from one side to the other even if you go the whole way around your layout you still have an end to it and um, they don't join. So what I do just to neaten it up if nothing else is I'm going to screw one of these terminal boxes to either end and then that's where the ends of my bus wires are going to sit um, for no other purpose than just to neaten it up, it also provides a uh, fixing point which will fix it to the bottom of the layout. So that's one of the terminal blocks in. As you can see my uh, current in use uh, droppers um, and then the new ones behind it. What I'm going to do now is take my uh, um, drill and drill some two small pilot holes just to hold the uh, bus wires in place. And of course, going down the layout, you can see um, a couple of holes every now and then. We'll just keep the, the wiring neat and tidy and hold the bus wire in place. So that's the next job. As you can see, the bus wires are now uh, neatly in. Um, they're not taut by any means, but um, there's just enough play in them um, to keep them free moving while keeping them neat and tidy and out of the way. And you can see my droppers there hanging. That's obviously the next job, to attach them with the splicers. Now, to try and show you this as best I can underneath the layout and with one hand, as you can see, the splicers literally sit on the wire. Um, the dropper goes in the second hole, and all you do is close the flap, which pushes in this silver uh, blade, which then quite literally cuts into the wire, splices it, and then that uh, is what makes the solderless connection. Um, so I'm just going to go around the layout now and connect up all the droppers, remembering to uh, uh, connect the black droppers to the black bus wire. Um, which is where the colour coding pays off. So I'm going to go and do that and uh, fingers crossed it works. We see some time later, um, this is one side of the layout and you can see the uh, six dropper points all uh, wired in. Um, the only thing I found with the splicers, you need to give them a, uh, a real hard squeeze with a pair of these pliers, um, just so it gets the uh, the splice actually cuts through the thinner dropper wire. Um, otherwise, what I found is it didn't actually go through. It goes through the big one, big bus wire, no problem. But the thin ones, you really have to give it a, a tight squeeze. So, 
Now's the fun bit, we'll get on with the testing. So here we are. All my lines running again. It's a very nice feeling to have all the trains running. Um, now the outside line, which hasn't run properly since since around Christmas time, um, is just having a spruce. My Class 68 is pulling my Dapol track cleaning wagon round right now, um, which I think that's about to, to appear. Um, because as you can imagine, with all the, uh, the works, especially on the station platform I've been doing, it's caused it to be nice and dusty. But, um, so that's cleaning. But it's nice to have all the lines running again. It's a job I've definitely been putting off since day dot. But uh, it's one I probably shouldn't have because it was nice and easy. But as you can see, everything's now running. It's just nice to get to that, that stage again. And for something so relatively simple as well. Um, it's neatened it all up, which is always a nice touch. What I've also done is used two spare splices I had and some spare cable, and I've come to my controller. That allows me to be more flexible because I can actually leave the board and walk around with it uh, should I need to, um, which is actually quite a handy, handy little feature, really. Eventually, I'll have a, uh, a proper control board for it and somewhere for it to live. But uh, for the sake of what is less than £20 and no soldering iron, you get rid of all this kind of this kind of wiring um, and you get yourself some nice neat electrics and it's super easy to do I've asked them not to do that while I'm filming <laughs> anyway you've been uh, listening to me again far too long and I'll uh, leave you with that and I'm gonna go and tidy my mess up ready for the uh, next video which will be the layout update as always thank you for watching take care now